Dr. Patricia Franklin, thank you for joining us on Empower Network TV today. I'm excited you're here. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Well, as I said, I'd just like to turn you loose. You've got all this passion, energy, and coming from uh, diverse backgrounds, too. So where do you want to start your interview? I just want to kind of turn you loose and listen to what you have to say. Oh, uh, let's put it this way. I'm on my third career, and I'm loving every bit of it. <laughs> That's where we can start. Okay. Uh, as well, take, take us back to the first career. Oh, scary, scary. My first career was a blur um, because it was a mix. I've never done one thing at a time. I've always done lots of stuff. So let me take you back to my college. I graduated from Penn State with a double degree. In uh, four and a half years, I came out with a double degree. And I ever since then, I've almost never been working, never been not working simply because I find things that I like, find things that I love, and then I discover either they work for me or that I'm not comfortable with them and because they don't work for me, and I instantaneously pivot and do something different. Find a way to make happiness in life every day. I don't settle for for second. I go for good. I like that. I don't settle for second. I go for good. So what happened after Penn State and double degree, and what happened then? Well, I came to Atlanta and I found myself working in retail, but I discovered that retail was, was not where I wanted to be and it didn't work out for me for several personal reasons. I call it my incubation period. And I think everybody who comes to the first job finds that it's an incubation for what really they will like and what they want to do and what that works for them. And that is the foundation of my careers today, because having worked in um, broadcast and, and, uh, and television radio for a few years. I found an opportunity to go and then work in the aviation industry, pulling on all of my skills. I worked as an educator uh, because I had credentials as an educator. I worked in the aviation industry because I had volunteered and participated all in high school in uh, an aviation activity for young people. So I had that background and they needed someone who could teach kids to explore and look at different careers. And I had that in Oh, just lost the audio. So they needed someone that could explore and look at different careers and then I got no audio now. went back to my foundation of uh, understanding that if you like something, you do it. If you don't like something, you change a little bit about it and you make it work for you. As founder of the NIA Academy for Careers and Literacy today, that's what I want our kids to be able to do. I've worked in, age, I've worked in um, education for 30 years, retired, but I saw so many of our kids leaving high school not knowing what they want to do. Mm. I know as we get our kids ready today, we're telling them so many jobs are changing. So many jobs don't exist the way they uh, used to be. So many jobs we prepared for in the 20, in 2000, um, the first generation of 2000, um, first, second decade of 2000. Now we're in the third decade of the 2000s. Some things that we used to teach our kids to know and do don't exist anymore. Handwriting, for one. We don't teach our kids at all how to handwrite. Yet there are folks who can tell you that if you write something and you write it clearly and you write it repeatedly enough times, it'll stick in your brain. You won't even have to think what it is because you'll understand it. It connects to you. I have kids who I ask, and I'm back in the classroom again. I'm volunteering and supporting um, teachers as a teacher's part-time teacher. Uh, in a middle school class working with kids who are uh, a English language learners, learning how to read and write and, and focus then on the academic context that we expect them to know. And they're still not printing, um, they're still printing or still not writing things in an intelligible method that helps teachers to help them. So we got a lot to do. We used to tell our children that we're gonna teach them to learn how to compute. 
Now we need to know that even with computing, they still need to know how to write. They still need to know how to get their ideas clearly down. And communication is valid no matter what AI we had. We need to know how to do that. There's a whole lot in there. <laughs> That's a whole lot. So this passion you have for these kids, like, do, were you like this yourself as a kid or a teen? What was, where'd you get yeah, it? As, as a teen, oh my God. I, I was a part of the organization called the Civil Air Patrol, United States uh, Auxiliary that teaches young people about aerospace. And I learned a lot about aviation. For four years, I uh, participated in that. And um, at the end of my high school career, I got sent out to one of the national special events to um, spend some time in Oklahoma City and become an air traffic controller. I also, when I was in high school, I learned how to sew. No, take that back. Middle school, I learned how to sew. My mom had a sewing machine. I loved fashion. So I could sew. By the time I got to high school, I could sew uh, prom dresses, wedding gowns, and uh, bathing suits and anything else. Um, uh, as a kid, my mother used to say that my daughter is um, willing to drive, willing to fly before she could even drive, which I literally did. I flew airplanes at 12 and I couldn't uh, drive cars until whenever. So, uh, How did you fly airplanes, airplanes at 12? What is the story there? <laughs> the Civil Air Patrol is the auxiliary that orients young people to learn about aviation. At during during some of our familiarization visits, we went to the local naval station, uh, naval air station, and they would take cadets up and give them an orientation flight. I can tell you when a 12-year-old learns something and decides that they like it, it sticks forever. And that stuck with me. I have not flown myself in the cockpit for over 30 years. But I love aviation. I love the science. I love the industry. And, you know, it's just one of those things when you orient a kid to something, they love it. And if they love it, it will stick with them forever. Anybody who's heavily passionate about something, they love it first. And then they develop into it. And that's what I did. So I'm really curious. I want to ask you more about the avionics. So, what else did you guys do in the Air Cadets? Uh, the Civil Air Patrol is part of the United States Air Force Auxiliary, and it allows young people to work in search and rescue. Uh, so if there are downed aircraft, sometimes the seniors or the cadets will be involved in security or in uh, finding lost aircraft. All right. Um, they give us orientation to all of the aviation industry. So kids who come through the Civil Air Patrol today, which is not as popular as it was when I was there, and when I was there it was in, during the Vietnam era, um, where wearing a uniform was not popular at all to wear the military uniforms because Americans were against Vietnam. But I was there not for the military connection, I was there for the aviation connection. So I learned about Amelia Earhart, I learned about all the other folks who are in the aviation industry. I learned about all of these astronauts. I learned about the defense system that we have. So I learned about all that is aviation from, from the beginning to present. And that took my heart. It gave me a chance to see that I can learn what the school system is teaching me, or I can learn what the rest of the world has to teach and put it all together and make it me the united person that I want to be. And that's what I want to do for our young people today. So that's well, my passion. Let's talk a little bit about then what your, your passion is now, what you want to do for the young people. I want young people to have a chance to explore careers. Counselors in schools these days don't have time to take each young person by the hand and show them what careers can be for them. Parents do. Some parents don't have the exposure or the wherewithal or the time or the ability to show their children about careers. Folks who have opportunities, folks who have their own business, 
teach their children and hope that they will become a part of that business. Folks who don't have those opportunities, don't have those, uh, those resources are on the mercy of the public schools or the private schools in some cases. But most schools don't spend time. We're spending time with the academics that we must do. And we forget that within those academics, our children are seeing where they can go for their future. Um, back in the 1990s, many states in the United States and across the world had something called Tech Prep, an in initiative by industry to uh, focus in on helping young people to um, see themselves in careers, understand how careers are tied to the academics that we offer in the public school or general any school, and then start doing uh, advanced career exploration and looking at problems, looking at issues in any given industry. That's what my organization does. We stopped it with the public schools because it was too labor intensive too intensive for any industry necessarily if your focus is education to get them all to look at how to apply that education. We try, but it's a big task. What I do with the NIA Academy is I take that big task, I was asking my people, my young folks, to think about who you are and where you are and what you want to do. I give them an assessment that identifies likes. John Holland, uh, a researcher back in the 60s, did some studies and understood that uh, a lot of what we like personality-wise and interest-wise ties into what will suffice and satisfy us in our jobs. There are Department of Labor correlations now that the assessment test that I have will connect you to the industry that you're interested in that would serve you well. So if you find that you like um, physical body kinesthetic type things, you want to go into either physical therapy or medicine. Well, I knew that I was one who couldn't take blood. I didn't like the idea of um, broken arms and whatnot. Never broke anything myself at all. But I did find out that if I could work at the blood mobile, I could get volunteer service, community service opportunities. And I never had to see the blood. So all of high school, I worked in the blood mobile, but I worked as the canteen coordinator offering refreshments to people after, <laughs> after they had given blood. So I can say now I can't stand blood, but I got four years of volunteer service with the Red Cross. And right. folks are looking at me and like, you're nuts. <laughs> no, I'm not nuts. I found a way to have fun. Found a no way. All right. And you're helping these kids find a way with your new, this new Endeavor Foundation. It has been brought to my attention, unfortunately, that a lot of our young people don't, and, and these particularly disadvantaged kids, many of the foster kids find themselves when they come out of that foster system and just released out to the world to try to do their best and find their best in the world. And unfortunately, those who don't have an adult or a mentor to sponsor or a mom and dad handy right there. And so many foster kids have parents who are unable to support them, many who are not even present, parents unable to, to help them. As young adults, we need guidance. Humans need guidance in our first, second, and third, gener third career, I mean, uh, excuse me, first, second, and third decade. So 10, we wouldn't send a kid to the workplace at 10. We, don't, we, we do send them to the workplace at 19. But in our 20s, we still need support. And that's what this NIA Academy for Careers is about. I want kids to think about what you like. I want you to see what you don't like. I want them to find a way to work with mentors. They don't even know what, how mentorship works. They think a mentor is going to drop in and tell them the whole thing nine yards of the job, but you've got to participate very heavily in a successful mentorship. And I want my kids to know what they can do. And I don't want to see too many of our kids, which is happening already, our foster kids running in with the law and finding themselves incarcerated or worse. And that's a waste of good human 
potential. So I'd like to see our children have a chance to take that energy that they have, because they have that same energy that I got, okay? And they want to be involved with life. So I want to make sure that those young people who have that opportunity can take it and use it. I want to create a community where they can talk with each other and support. That's the second thing. What you do is offer a community of information. The NIA Academy can create, the NIA Academy for Careers and Literacy can create a community for support as well. Mm -hmm. So we have three levels of workshop. Our first level is just the Write Cursive Now workshop, where I will teach in a day how to write cursive. Then we have practice sessions throughout the month to become proficient and comfortable in writing cursive because cursive should not die. Secondly, I have the career divers and my career divers get a chance to look at their skills, find out their strengths, find out what they're not so strong in. I'm not gonna call it a weakness because just because it's not strong today doesn't mean it won't be strong later. Uh, find out how to make that better for themselves, who to work with and how to work with a mentor, how to find what you can call your place in the world. And here's what we do in our school systems. We tell our children they're scholars and we don't tell them what a scholar is. You know what a scholar is? No. See there, you don't even know. <laughs> a scholar is someone in the tradition from way back in African tradition. A scholar is one who studies, learns, then comes back to his or her community and contributes build their own community based on what they have learned. That is what a scholar is. Wow, that's a great definition. Can you drop links for your new, your new endeavor? Do you have a website for it so people could read up about it? I do. I have a Facebook page oh. called the NIA Academy for Careers and Literacy. And I'm building a web page, so it's not up yet, but it's coming. Yep. So... Uh, that is my plan this year to get us outreach, to have another cohort for our young people. I, I expect our cohort to be ready to roll and start in April. So we're doing a little recruitment right now. And folks who want to learn more about our programs, I can uh, have them to text cursive, C-U-R-S-I-V-E, to a number 404-295-4363. I can give information on all three levels of our program. Yeah, please drop those links in the comments and that those instructions after so people can reach out to you. That was, uh, it's great. I appreciate you being here, Patricia. This has been a lot of fun. I appreciate your energy. I can imagine you as a, a studious, energetic, young kid, eager to learn. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Any last uh, comments before we end the broadcast? I just want to say, I believe that everyone has a purpose. And when we all embrace our purpose, this is going to be a great place to live in. Thank you. Oh, thanks for being here. Well, on the broadcast here, ENTV members, if you've been listening, watching, Patricia, Dr. Patricia, Patricia, Flank, Patricia Franklin, message her, DM her. She'd love to connect with you. She'll be dropping some contact stuff in the comments after. And we'll be seeing you soon.